Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the report for Tiger Mountain. We're going to talk about the crucifixion of Russell Brand, who's been a major figure in the freedom movement in the last uh, five to ten years. Stick around and listen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, report for Tiger Mountain. We're going to talk about the crucifixion of Russell Brand. You'll notice that Russell Brand, kind of under, under the last 10 years, went through a kind of transformation. He was part of, clearly part of the machine. He was part of the Hollywood machine. He was a lefty lovey. You know, he, he th maybe he thought he was Che Guevara. But, you know, he seemed to have had somewhere, I don't know where, along the last 10 years, some kind of road to Damascus moment, ladies and gentlemen. And he began to kind of speak out about politics. And I, I always quite liked um, that, that about him, but clearly he was a man from the left. So, but he began to be more and more red-pilled. Particularly during the pandemic, he really came into his own. And, um, you know, began to really speak out against Big Pharma. And, you know, he really began to note the way that, you know, the globalists, the global elites were behind many crises. And um, I thought, you know, he was a very interesting figure. And I think because he had such a following, he was so popular and he had such a following um, um, from the left that, um, you know, it, it was very interesting to see some a figure like that, a mainstream figure, almost take his left wing audience you know, on, on, a, on a red pilling trip, on a glorious red pilling trip, you know, he'd say, you know, hello, welcoming wonders, or whatever, you know, and he, and he kind of looked a bit like Jesus, you know, he got all healthy, you know, and now, you know, obviously Russell Brand had a bit of a past, ladies and gentlemen. He was a bit of a, well, to say, to say the least, he, first of all, he was a drug addict for a long time. I think around 20 years ago, he got sober. And then he, after he remained a sex addict, and he and um, he was uh, very very promiscuous, sleeping with different women all the time, and he was very touchy feely in interviews. I mean, he was considered one of the more sexy men in the world during the double O's, and. Um, you know, he would sort of come over to a female interview and sit on her lap and go, how are you? And give me a cuddle. Oh, you're lovely. You're beautiful. You know, and, you know, it, it was sort of charming. And this was sort of a time really even almost before cancel culture when people were kind of cheeky and, you know, I don't know, you could kind of get away with it as a kind of lad culture that I think Brand was a part of. Now, I mean, you know, I do, did he behave inappropriately? I think he probably did behave a little inappropriately in that, in that period in the sense he was probably being overly friendly to people. But now what's happened is, is there's this documentary from Channel 4 has appeared and uh, it's a, with one person accusing him uh, of, of uh, sexual impropriety and uh, four or five other anonymous people. So it, it appears to be a kind of Julian Assange kind of smear campaign. Um, you know, about six months ago, he went on, um, you know, like Bill Meyer, uh, who's a famous Jewish, um, you know, guy who does like talk show host in America. And, uh, you know, he often, Bill Meyer pretends to talk to conservatives or put across conservative ideas sometimes. You know, he, he's obviously a complete traitor. But in, anyway, uh, Brand went on there. He invited Brand on. I don't think he knew what he was in for. And Brand basically made a link between... <laughs> Um, you know, the global elites and COVID, the global elites and climate change and the global elites and the Ukraine war and that how, you know, all these crises, you know, it's all about these global elites enriching themselves. And you can see, um, you know, Bill Maher kicking him under the table. It's very, very articulate. You can look, find the clip online still. Uh, and it was about six months after that that this attack came through because he just spoke the truth far too much and it was so red-pilled and obviously he'd become more and more right-wing. He began to talk to people like Tucker Carlson, began to talk to uh even he was even you know beginning to buddy up to donald trump jr so he was moving more and more right uh obviously during the pandemic there was the whole freedom movement that he was uh, extremely critical of uh, big pharma constantly pointing out often very factual things that were going on with that so you know I, I thought it really was fascinating and obviously i think what we're seeing now is a typical smear campaign similar to what they did with julian assange i don't know if he'll be charged over this maybe it's just about the smear obviously he did get the platform financially from youtube but he's i think he's still on rumble and um i think you can still donate money there or follow him or whatever so i would recommend you go out there and do that ladies and gentlemen because i quite like russell brand okay he was a bit of a degenerate but, you know, I think he's somebody who had a sinful past, um, you know, who has, uh, you know, improved his life. He's, you know, he, he quit doing all that. He quit drugs. He quit being promiscuous. He got married. He had kids. He settled down. And I think we should all forgive everybody, you know, like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, which is obviously the archetype, which Russell Brand is um, kind of like channeling a bit. So, you know, I think it's good that he's standing up and I think he's been very powerful in the politics 
um, and the political videos he's produced, particularly the last five years. So that's my thoughts on Russell Brand. I think it's bullshit, uh, all these accusations against him. And here at the Report from Tiger Mountain, we support Russell Brand, as should you.